Hello everyone, today we'll be doing a tutorial using the Prusa i3 MK3 slicer and we will be showing you how to stack items on the slicer. So our motivation for this video is due to the COVID-19 outbreak. We've seen a lot of people online 3D printing lots of masks to provide for healthcare workers. And we see them printing one or two at a time, um, but lots of people don't know about a stacking feature that you can uh, manually do through these slicers to print um, even more at one time. So we're going to show you how to do that today. So we want to add the COVID-19 headband STL to the slicer. So we're just using the standard one that Prusa provides. Um, so from here, you want to select within your COVID-19 headband envelope. You want to right click editing and you want to add part within that envelope. Doing that will add it right over the exact part that you have. So selecting this little drop down menu here, if you have the whole thing selected, you'll be able to move both parts at one time and then selecting each individual one will allow you to move individually. So selecting one, we can see that the size in the z-axis is 20 millimeters. So we want to change the position of the second object up to 20 millimeters. So you see here, this will raise the Prusa mask and it will show that they're perfectly stacked. So one issue with having them perfectly stacked is that when you go to separate them, it can be a pain since there's no separation between these two masks. So um, a good height to separate it is by 0.4 millimeters. So we can change the height to 20.4 millimeters. So we can see that as a nice little gap in between the two. So when you go to separate them, it'll be nice and easy. So we can do this one more time to add a third stack. So let's right click again, add part, load COVID-19 headband. So we'll select the third one that's imported here. Since there's two masks, we want to raise it 40 millimeters. 40 millimeters and we'll do 0.8 to account for two mask offset of 0.4 each time. So we see that there's a nice separation between each set of masks here and we're good to go. So if you go to slice these masks as is, any type of slicing software will recognize this as an empty layer because we have those 0.4 millimeter gaps between each one. So we see we have an uh, empty layer detected when we go to slice this. So what you want to do is you want to add a support enforcer. So you go to add support enforcer and let's just do a box for this example. We will scale the box to fit all of these masks inside of them. And we will scale like such. So when we go to slice the object, the Prusa slicer will detect the support enforcers. Ensure you have the support enforcers only uh, selected here, and we'll see we're good to go. So it'll support each little tab that's uh, on the masks, and there'll be some support overhang around. You can eliminate some of that in, within the settings, but this stuff is not very hard to remove when you go to take this off the build plate. So, It'll save you a lot of time when putting multiple things. So uh, we can up our production even more if we get rid of the support enforcer just so we can see the envelope again. So if we select the entire envelope of uh, visors that we have and we add instance, we can double our production. So if we change this to 45 degrees to appropriately fit it on the build plate, and then we change the second one, 45 degrees, 180. And we can position these on the build plate like such. And this will greatly ramp up the production. So we can do the same thing again. We can add support enforcer. Let's do a box. And because it's mirror, it'll show both boxes in the middle, but that doesn't really matter because if you scale them to the full print volume, you'll be able to print with no issues. So let's engulf everything like that. Let's go to slice all the visors. And once this loads up, we'll see that we'll have six visors ready to print. So this will significantly reduce the time that it requires to print and help uh, everyone in the community up the mass production to provide to our healthcare workers. So 
So this is almost done loading here, and then we can see our final output for masks. So you might want to reposition some of your masks so we can see that because we placed two, there's a slight overhang. But by repositioning, repositioning these just a little more inside the build plate, we can play with that a little bit. So that the tool path isn't 100% outside, we can just bring these close together. And then when you go to slice again, you should be good to go. Just make sure you have your support forces in and you're ready to go.